阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛。Today we're going to continue on part seven.、Uh, last week we talked about transgression of shamelessness, and that one was finished because、um, uh, we kind of go very long, super super long on that one, and、um, that's it. So this week is a bit easy, not easy. It's straightforward. We only have four sentence, four pairs of sentences. And this one is just wasteful behaviors. Part seven is, is pretty straightforward. The translations might not be directly accurate. I will try to give a bit more context. That's、so、why I just can't. I can't just. Yeah, I have to think about this one. So, chapter um, this sentence to waste fabric. Yes, it said to waste fabric. 无故剪裁 We have to take it more. Uh, the context. We have to understand the context. So, the literal meaning is you, you, you know, you waste the fabric for something, you know, pointless、uh, use. You know, you don't, you, 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 you waste resources. And the second half is to slaughter animals solely to satisfy one greed's desire to eat meat. That's true. I mean, common sense wise, you know, why would you slaughter animal if you do not want to eat meat? So this case is more about、uh, the the actual Chinese translation is more about you、um, slaughter and cook the animal、uh, at how to say at a very frequent interval, right? I'll give context on why do we have this sentence here because、um, Tai Shang is not hundred percent like vegetarian, right? It's not Buddhist vegetarian. Concept, but um, this one is a very how to say very in line with the um folk uh law uh folk uh teaching uh back in the days, right? It's not um common to have meat back in the days. I only have meat when there is some sort of a huge event like festivals when they go into pray to the ancestors. They only get some, you know. I think a lot of Chinese will understand the、uh, barbecue pork or some sort of a,、uh, you know, sauro.、Uh, you know, those kind of very、um, festive、uh, occasions. Only then they have a proper meat、uh, to to serve、um, everyone, the whole village. All right. So they don't just eat it like what we have nowadays,、uh, post eighteen hundred, post seventeen eighteen hundred. You know those modern times. I think even in Europe, it's not common to have meat every single day. Not everyone can afford it. And so, the context behind these two sentences, right? Pretty much、uh, straightforward. The first one is do not waste resources because resources is very precious. Understandably, we are in a more、uh, abundant kind of a society. While we are in the part of a society that are more abundant, however.、Um, You know, those is because of karma. We understand karma. We understand how we accumulate this kind of fortunes,、uh, good fortunes. Like I say, it's a currency, right?、It、translate in the form of you're living in a place of abundance with so much resources. So, so in this case, you know, it goes beyond just wear your the things you wear, right? Whatever you wear, you know, if you can wear more,、uh, supposed to be worn hundred times, and you only wore one two times. Throw it away,、uh, because there's a little bit of hole somewhere. It, it might sound nothing, you know. It might sound like a common practice, but it's it's a waste, all right. If you can use a cloth hundred times, you should wear hundred times, so that you used, you know, its full lifespan. You know, use it to its to its fullest. That's how you appreciate your own fortunes.、Um, And you know, yeah, yeah. 
And when when we talk about the second half, um, in terms of cultural context, it's just uh, when you eat stuff, when you you know, when you um, uh, uh, back in the days, like I mentioned, like in Chinese context or in East Asian context, one month they only eat twice. Meat is not something common. I'm not talking about being a Buddhist and eat meat. I'm talking about in a very everyday people kind of scenario. Other, in, unless you're living like a, you know, emperor or a king, even they also follow the rules as well. You know, they don't just eat because as a as a good example, they need to show a a a, a role model. They don't eat it every day like that. It's it's not healthy and it's also not um, it's a wasteful behavior, right? Because you're taking a life. It's not. Uh, it's not. It's not easy. All right. Right now we have industrial killing. We don't see anything behind that wall. But when you saw the videos of a lot of people posting how they actually industrialize the killing, right? The far uh, the butcheries. We call it butcheries. But it's still killing. It doesn't matter uh, how you how you mask it. It's it's but, uh, it's killing. So the butchery of the animal, you know, when you saw them in a large scale, uh, very inhumane kind of a, how to say, in a way, in very, how to say, very removed kind of a process, then we un- we, we were far removed from the source and we we get more numb to the to the place where it came from. And so it gets more and more common, you know, and it was marketed in the way where, you know, you see meat as, as, as it is, not where it came from, not kind of a, process that it takes the agony that animal have to go through to give you this uh, dish of meat so going back to just simply when is it the right time to eat meat normally only twice you know always the first day or the 15th day uh, when you pray to god pray to the ancestor uh, you buy a little bit of meat you know those like very uh, sometimes are dried meat or stuffing because they can't, they don't butcher every day, and uh, very small volume, and uh, you know, especially during New Year, Chinese New Year or you know, the Lunar New Year that other East Asian country celebrate, Vietnam, Japan, Korea, they also celebrate Chinese New Year, their their own uh, their own uh, rendition, but it is Chinese New Year, uh, only twice, you know, and um, you know, twenty days once. So it's very rare, um, and you can understand that. So the Confucius do not stop uh, meat eating. However, they do not tell you you should you should you know as being uh, senselessly you know pursuing this kind of diet, this kind of uh, habit. You know, this consumption pattern means you pursuing this kind of uh, killing endlessly. You are supporting this kind of action. So back in the day, even though they are not like Buddhists, hundred percent vegetarian like even in Chinese Chinese Buddhism is the only one that actually stops eating meat in old days right like back then even like the old you know the pre-modern one the like in Tibetan area they they really have no access to uh, vegetations right back in the days right now they can and they will try to be vegetarian back in the days they don't have access to that they still have to buy the meat from the uh, butcheries but only just enough to feed themselves, not for the sake of, you know, oh, oishi, very tasty, you know, I want to eat more soft buttery beef flavor. That kind of mindset is not uh, common because it's too luxurious. And and also in, in, in you know, in, in Theravadan Buddhist tradition, uh, they do not forbid eating meat or fish, but they do not go out and hunt and kill. They just ge- eat what they were given from the lay disciples you know they are normal everyday people they whatever the proceeds they have and they don't usually eat meat every single day all right well the white like the fish one may be more common but they don't eat that every single day so this is it's it's a worldwide thing right after you modernize it you put it in the factory and everything becomes very convenient this abundance come into action which gives prosperity to people however it also gives a lot of wasteful uh, uh, behavior, wasteful kind of a mindset because uh, I can just toss it and buy a new one. TV, you you broke, toss it, buy a new one. The walk, 
you broke, toss it and buy a new one. It's unheard of. Back in the day, you need to find someone who fix the wok, you know, the, the cooking utensils or the clothing. My mom is still doing that. You, you need to, you know, sew it back. You know, I learned that a bit, but not much. But that, you know, the concept, you sew it back. So, so that's the meat as well. You, you only eat it twice per month and you don't always get to do that. It was actually, even, even in 1940s, when Master Ching Kong, uh, you know, escaping from World War II, he mentioned that, uh, you know, it's very um, rare for him to eat it back then, but before he's a monk, right? Um, however, we must understand further, right? Now we know about karma and we are in this environment, you know, the Buddhist Dharma talk right now in that way. We should not, you know, understand, uh, touch uh, meat eating. Like that's always the stances we would take because, you know, those things are killing and killing creates cleaning. Uh, karma, right? You read what you sow is very fair. You don't eat this one kilogram of whatever beef or um, lamb for free. You need to pay it back with your own. It's not funny. It's really painful. Like when you actually witness this beyond our confined senses you know only to see what we can see which is very crude right we can't even see the seven colors in the white color spectrum white colors was made from seven colors we only can see a few we, only, we need to rely on some instrument to see that we can't even see that properly how can we claim we know everything of course we don't say we claim no everything how can we claim we know this and that right how can we claim something is superstitious when you can't even see a proper uh, spec seven section of light scientific scientifically speaking this is just it's too arrogant so what i'm saying is this thing teaching thousands of years there are merits to it all right and if you understand that killing begets killing doesn't matter what form you right even a small insect or stuff like that obviously moderation you don't you don't want to get all you know too too um too much but you must understand if you can avoid it, just just avoid it. And and World War One, World War Two, you know, think about it. Why would this group of people slaughter another group of people senselessly, using that kind of industrialized killing, right? Gas chamber, that kind of terrible, horrible ways. Or this army going to a another people's uh, country invaded and then do some sort of horrific acts, killing babies and pregnant peoples, and performing experiments. Why would they do that? If a normal functioning person, though, they wouldn't do that. Why would they senselessly do it as a group? You have to think about it. It's, it's nothing, nothing comes out of nowhere. You can't just classify it as mental illness. It's done in a, such a smart, well-calculated way. Those people are top, you know, IQ-wise. But why would they do this kind of thing to another person? Those are karma. Doesn't care how much smart you are, how how good you are, your um, you know, IQ, whatever Q people can measure from the outside. Karma is the force that drives you to do something. Unless you are fully awakened and understand and able to cultivate samadhi, you know, that samadhi comes out from prohibition, prohibition of the negative karma, purify your acts. Then you have samadhi because you have ability. Samadhi means able to um unmoved in a way unmoved uh, thing unmoved by outside environment unmoved by the these elements especially these karmic elements that keep driving you you have somebody you're able to withstand it other people do something to you you're able to withstand it those things takes the somebody the baby of somebody the, the the budding of somebody is patience not patience it's uh, with uh, able to withstand yeah. We stand this pain, we stand this temptation, pleasure and pain, and and we stand this uh, wandering thoughts, all this thing. And it all starts from jie, which is prevention, precepts. You know, precepts means in, 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 in the more visual way of speaking, it's to stop, to stop harming. The five precepts is to stop these five acts that will harm yourself and others. All right? Killing is... The first thing, no killing. Doesn't care what religion you are, what ethical spectrum you are. No killing is no killing. But the spectrum is wider in Buddhism. We don't just say don't kill humans. We say don't kill all sentient beings. Because, why? Not just because we compassion, we like, we, uh, 
with like you know people pre- my, my, my are misunderstood as tree huggers and you know hippies and like nature why not they they are lovely people but that is not enough that's not driving it home the point of buddha actually do that which will show how far he sees things how how white buddha understands stuff right how deep how mature his thought is is he's wanted to stop you from being killed in future he wants to protect you people who are willing to listen to him is because he they can avoid the karma come out of being killed in future. Every action gets a reaction. Doesn't matter what you do. This killing act will get a reaction, a killing reaction, right? Call it retribution, revenge. And this is this is not going to end. It's war, war, war is like the, war happens because of this, right? Otherwise, why were two camps of people who has no idea about each other until they actually? pointed the gun at each other or sword at each other start killing I do not have any idea about you why do I want to kill you in the name of whatever ideas in the name of that you know patriotism and stuff like that right so the, so that's why this 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 one is not just simply oh don't eat meat it's just simply understanding meat eating has to do with um, very practical reason so the prohibition of meat eating uh, first thing is the compassion. It's very important to cultivate compassionate mindset so that you don't um, incur more sufferings on others. And second is also self-preservation. In the other hand, it's self-preservation in the most thorough way. You know, self-preservation is not just right of bare arms. That one is very crude. That one is like, well, right of bare arms, I can defend myself. If the society, no one is like that, there's no need to bear arms, right? The part, the unfortunate fact that you have to stuck to that kind of mindset, right? It's because the society is not civilized enough. It's not, it's not, it's not calm enough for everyone to sit down and talk. So they have to use the arms to protect, right? So what we want is we want to reduce that sort of foundational problem, which is a lot of animosity, hatred. And that thing comes from killing, right? A, a lot of killing was done in the past, and 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 they accumulate, right? And when, when they accumulate to a certain level, it becomes war. Right? It can come in any form. It can translate in any form. Like fortune is a currency, good fortune. So does those sins, right? Which is opposite of fortune. Ye zhang, zui ye, zui nie, right? The sins. Also, is a currency. It transforms in any form. It can be in the form of Hitler, form of you know the, the those Nazis. It can be in form of those Imperial Japanese Army, right? It can be in the form of those um, very uh, both sides, okay? In the form of those very uh, unethical kind of a, unethical as in very extreme uh, kind of a group of people. That performs extreme brutality on in another people. Those are those are vengeance, right? Others, how would you explain someone who has nothing to do with other people and, and driven by some sort of ideology and start doing all this terrible stuff? You know? So it's a very practical need. You know, it's not just hoo ha, wish wishful thinking. The Buddha has seen that, has seen the cycle, and 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 this thing never ends. Unless we stop eating meat, stop the very fundamental act of killing, stop supporting it. Of course, we need to also need to deal with our anger. That thing is that thing is causing more more hatred. That myself, I'm talking to myself actually. So there's a lot of anger. There's a lot of this uh, unease. This world is not um, what we want to be because we have so much. Uh, negative karma we have created in the past. We're born here because we need to take this so that we can release our negative karma, pay our debt, pay our due. That kind of mindset will help you. So does this phrase, wasteful behavior is wasting your good fortune. The reason you're not stuck in a place where you constantly have to bear your arms and fear for your life is because you have good fortune. Maybe what is good fortune? The, The opposite of the transgression mentioned here, or to make it simpler, the opposite of the five 
uh, in the transgression in, in Buddhist teaching, you know, the killing, the sexual misconduct, the um, lying, the uh, stealing, those are rudimental, uh, those first four, right? And, and you translate, expand it, it will become this, Tai Sang Gai Yin Pian, you know, the treaties and respond and retribution, that's the theme of the whole book. Uh, why would people, why would this happen, you know, because of this transgression, this negative behavior, negative karmic behavior. So, to understand importance of good fortune, to understand the consequences of you know, the sins that were committed, uh, we need to, like this, you know, follow some sort of um, concept one by one and understand it in a more real life example kind of mindset. And so this one is to help you to so stop wasting your fortune. Because good fortune can be used in so many ways. You need it as well. If you want to live a more peaceful, carefree life, a more, how to say, uh, even ability to learn Buddha Dharma without being hindered, it's a huge fortune. All right? Let alone going to Pure Land. That one, you cannot have no fortune. Because our Sangha Buddha, you need good fortune to get there. It's a currency. It's a. It's like money, right? Why would we want to work nine to five, so tired and do this? Because we need the money to survive, right? And good fortune determines whether you need to work three hours just to get that amount of money, or you need to work three months to get that amount of money. Same. Different people, different good fortune, right? Because they cultivate different uh, good deeds or they prevent themselves uh, from committing negative karma. So this is one of the things. Don't do this and you will help yourself. All right? So understand karma, we naturally understand why do we eat meat? We can't. I don't want to create any more animosity. And fabrics or clothing and things like tissues that you use, those things you'll be more conscious. All right? I'm guilty of that as well. I start to get more wasteful because things are more convenient. When you get more convenient, you can just throw away and take it. And things seem like endless, right? You can't see the end of your fortune anyway. It's it's very, how to say, it's fast in our point of view. It can be years, but years are still counted. It's counted down. So I'm not saying you should be stressed or you should be over, you know, overly, you know, um, you need to do it the way you understand it. Like you need to understand when you can uh, say, you know, use that tissue five times, like five corners, All right? One, two, three, four, five, like fold it up and stuff. Then you use it five times, All right? Very simple, All right? Um, why you do this? Because you want to save up your good fortune, All right? This is how, you know, the old people do that. You know, generations of old people do that. They keep... They keep the, you know, those small tissue paper. It like, might be a holding behavior if it's too much. But um, when you use it, you always need to uh, be be aware of it. When when the clothing you wear has a little bit of problem, you, if you can fix it, you fix it. Learn the sewing and stuff like that. Um, and, 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 you know, the shoes that you wear, right? Uh, take good care of it. You know? So this is what first half is trying to say. Do not... Um, use things carelessly. Think about it because why would you one? How do one waste? They use it carelessly. <laughs> you know they should have be more careful about the things they use. Uh, so th this this is also a form of meditation, right? You be more aware of your movements, of your, of your of your actions, so that you don't uh, unnecessarily damage damage your stuff, your phone as well, right? So nowadays everyone like oh it's just two years one, two year one, right? It's as if it's nothing. It's just this wasteful consumerism behavior. It's it's wasting our resources, wasting our fortunes. You may not see your lifetime. This lifetime you may be enjoying, right? This, this is a problem of not having karmic education. This lifetime you're enjoying it, right? It doesn't seem like you're lacking of anything. I can guarantee if, if that kind of wasteful behavior continues, Either next lifetime or this end of your lifetime, you will find yourself slowly you know, lacking the resources you need to get by. Right? Next lifetime, you won't be living in such an abundance area. You will be stuck in a more, what do I say, lacking environment. It's fair. It's because you don't appreciate what you have. You waste it. 
And this needs to start from education. You can't expect kids to know that. If you put them in such a nice, abundant, like, comfortable environment and without role model from parents, there's no way they can uh, not do that. You know, like example, like like those tissue using or you know the clothing and stuff like that. It's still ingrained in me, even though I'm here now, like twenty something, like almost thirty. When you see your own parents, you know, do this kind of, you know, more um, frugal behavior. You know, they they save up, they don't don't spend money senselessly. Then you start to understand that. Um, and I'm I'm guilty of that of being very wasteful of money as well. And and that's because you always you know you used to it, and 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 because we used to be not so. We're not living in the first world country. We don't start from the first world country. We're in the third world, not third world, Malaysia, in the middle. And it's not like we, we have, you know, or you want to buy PS4, PS5. We don't have that kind of thing in childhood. It's a blessing in a sense, but, um, you know, I only get this when I move to Australia. <laughs> so, so yeah, this, this, this other thing we need to reflect on, you know. Um, like, you, when you can use it, use it properly, but don't, don't, um, don't take it for granted, because those things will not last. You know, those those kind of fortune, they will come and go. Now you waste it. The older you get, the like lesser you will get. You know, if you don't save up, when you when you get move on with the time, you will find yourself you will spend too much in the beginning, and now you're lacking a lot. All right. Uh, the best way is you know to 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 to. to on yourself, do not spend too much. You know, um, on others, yes, you have to be generous, learn to be generous, learn to give. And those are the ways to cultivate more fortunes, good fortunes. And do it without asking for good fortunes. Just do it because, it's, you know, you just want to share with people. You know, it's a, it's a sense of, it's a sort of joy in a, in a way. If you have too much fabric, give it away. Yeah. So those are small stuff, you know. Uh, um, but this is the theme of the topic, this part, right? So, hmm. so everything comes in a circle, right? Your, your, the resources you have, the, the, you know, the people you meet, you know, the deeds you did, you know, even the food you eat, uh, it will come back to you one day, right? If you um, waste the food, especially food, right? In canteen, you see the kids. If they're senselessly leaving a whole plate of, you know, good food you know, wasted, right? This is because of the failure of either the school education as well as the parents' education. Like in a good, in a good teaching, a country that will appreciate this. Like one of the good role models in Japan. Well, yeah, I did see their school system where the kids are actually given the portion just enough, right? not too much. And they actually, you know, finish it. You know, this is the, the norm. You know, you finish your food. You don't put it there. And, I'm, I don't like. I don't like this. And then I just don't eat it. You know, those those things need to be taught. You know, you cannot be picky on your food. You, know, you need to eat what you get, and and appreciate it. Enjoy the food at the moment. Those moment of able to eat food when you want is such a blessing. It's it's not. It's easy right now. It does not seem very hard, but when you understand what those people are lacking, you know, then you understand it does not come easily. You know, it's not. Um, this is what the next topic is about. Sorry, to waste and destroy rice, barley, grain, and stable food, to conscript or impose coffee label, <laughs> coffee label. Um, the first half. Uh, let's talk about this one. It's quite straightforward. You're just wasting all the. Uh, food. Wu uh, uh, in Chinese, there are five kind type of grains that are very precious. They are considered sacred, almost god-like status, because those things, those five grains, is what fed the whole civilization, right? Wu gu, wu gu zha liang, right? Chinese will heard that a lot. Wu uh, gu five grains. Yep, they explain it. You can just find out in Wikipedia as well. Five grains, uh, you know, group of five farm crops important in ancient China. All right. 
uh, just for context uh, sake, is um, it's so important, right? If wasting it is like wasting, uh, it's like it's like a it's like spitting in front of God, the God's face. Basically, um, punishable by hell in a way. In a way, it's, it's such a such a sacred stuff to appreciate these five uh, grains because this is what feeds you, uh, nurtures you, right? Um, did they mention it? Five farm crops in ancient China. Yeah, squandering the five grains was seen as a sin worthy of torment in the the Chinese hell. Um, yeah, what do we say? What naugu? All right, all right. Let's not go over, over the top. So it's it's um it's just the five grains, and I I, I don't know what did they mention it here. Five grains. In China, what is it? All right, millet, rice, azuki bean, soybean, barley, and wheat. All right, sesame. That's more than five. Millet, rice, azuki bean, soybean, barley, and wheat. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so those things are important. Like for us, wheat, for us, rice. You know, those things are feed. What feeding the whole civilization? Doesn't matter what era you in. So the more of the story is just don't waste food and uh, know where it came from. We help you. Yes, we have machines nowadays. We have all these, you know, technologies that really, really, this is where technology really needed. Yeah, very, very useful. Machination of farmings, right? U.S. is wealth is founded on that, to be honest. You know, it's, it's very forgotten. But why is this country so strong? Because they have a strong foundation. In, in agriculture before the industrialization there's such a I can see that you, your country has such a strong farming foundation machination and all that and able to you know, produce such a large tons self-sufficient and export so this is this is the heart and soul of every country of every people you know and it's too easy to forget how hard this came by when they started Right, those things that need to be educated. It's not culturally constrained. You, can, you easily you can just put it in the curriculum and tell them how hard it started, and and understand where it came from. It has no political affiliation, anything. It's just how hard this, you know, country was founded when it started. You know, this farming and all this, you know, technology and stuff makes it easier for you. Doesn't mean that you can squander it because this thing will go up, come and go very easily. You know, maybe this era you might not see it, but maybe your children, your grandchildren. So just be, just be more, how to say, aware of the uh, the food you have, the convenience. Uh, be appreciative of that, and so those things will make you enjoy simply simple things. You know, just able to sit here and have a tea and have some nice cake. It's very joyous. You know, simply simple joys. I do, I do find joy in that. And I encourage everyone to, you know, just enjoy the simple thing they have every day instead of chasing after, you know, whatever's flashy and next big thing, concert or stuff like that. Not saying that you wouldn't, but just enjoy everyday stuff, you know. Those things come in so much process to get to your hand. Have that mindset. And and, and it, uh, it will make you more, how to say, um, reflective of your actions so that you can be more... Um, Less wasteful. So that's that's what uh, they talk about the food. The next part is Lao Yu Zhong Shen. Lao Yu Zhong Shen. Yeah, not call we label. That's a bit too much. That's too archaic. We don't do that nowadays. We don't. Well, we have modern slavery, but in a in a more common context. It means, you know, you're wasting human resources, basically. Call we labor means like, you know, like basically like enslavement in a way. Indentured servitude, is it? I don't know where to get the translation from, which is very interesting. Call we is a French word, unpaid labor. Like constructing road due from a feudal vessel to his lord. <laughs> okay, okay. In, in a sense, basically you're wasting human resources. I think that would be a more um, a, a proper way to say it. Lao Yu Zhong Shen Ma, right? You you use so much human resources to do something useless or to waste it on something pointless, you know? 
uh, as a governance uh, people with you know, leadership they usually have the um, say in the project right and they use this kind of team to do so much effort to put so much R&D research and development in there only to end up wasted because they do their goal is not even right in the beginning all right so always be careful where you put the human effort into because those are these, those are money and those are time and those are also resources that could be used to focus on better stuff right like if you put too much like for example i would say right this are um, these are the realm of flexing it a bit using too much resources on military development on development how to cure people more efficiently is one such transgression i would dare claim that right it's not like your con the country is in danger of being invaded. No one dares to touch U.S. soil. No one dare to land it. It's those those kind of people should be put into the R and D for better farming, better food production, better irrigation, better uh, maybe education. Uh, and just put it in the right place, so so that you don't waste you know, the um, res human resources. You know, those are talking from high level area where we where we can't touch. But um just just a mindset, right? A societal a society mindset. Those people in the high ups are also part of the society. They were coming out from society, fulfilling expectation of society, also influencing expectation of influencing the society as well. Right? And understanding this will make us be more aware. So those are long term education. Like what we have in Master Wooling's talk, like those kind of mindset of you know um, how to be more disciplined even though you have a lot of these dangerous firearms and stuff is a culture you know a culture of discipline culture like switzerland has gun right to bear arms as well yes they're homogeneous compared to uh us and i was uh, in no position to judge any of it because i'm neither but um i have a swiss friend who has that same you know right to bear arms and stuff like that and they have that discipline mindset it's just their culture they only use it against the invasion and there's no invasion happening for a long time since 1600s in swiss they wouldn't not having gun back then all right Fl flintstones maybe flintlock guns so the modern weaponry not even world war ii they were invaded so so back uh, same goes for other places as well all right so those things needs to needs to needs to, needs to be um, educated in a mass on mass on mass in a huge scale, and this needs to have a consensus. Those things those things need to take time, you know. Otherwise, uh, uh, it's just a waste of um, human life, you know. In this case, Lao Yu Zhou literally means you use the people's time and effort senselessly. You're wasting it, and those are usually uh, meant for people in power right why would a random dylan able to do that he won't if i'm in charge of a project that involves hundreds of people thousands of people right then i might cause this have to happen in our daily context it might refer to say our family our friends you know you you're wasting their time for something uh a sense uh a senseless pursuit or something like that um you know, doing something there is no, 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 no benefit. Um, I think that's it. Wow, that's, yeah, that's a lot. It's going really far. How you Zhongshan? Okay. Hmm. Can we go further on this? Let's see. Should we just finish the whole four sentence? Because there's nothing much, let's not add. On top of it, poor yeah. Poor in this context, you know, literally saying breaking people's house. Uh, in this case, it's bankrupt, bankrupting people. You know, it's um. 可怕你不要提示显恨之恶. Ah, okay, okay. This is a different chapter. My my apologies. This one belongs to a different uh, category. Just showing. Uh -huh. uh, so, Amito for Amito. 
so far. Yeah. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. This is a different category. This one is part eight already. It's uh, Xian Heng. Uh, we'll talk about this next week because it's almost an hour anyway. So yeah, it's just four sentence, wasteful behavior. Uh, they put it in this treatise on response and retribution because it's wasting your fortune. Mm-hmm. Wasting your good fortune, wasting your um, all the merits have occurred. Um, remember, all these things is about you know the actions and the action reflects your state of mind, your thoughts, your speech. This is more action based, like what you do. You know, you waste food, you um, uh, eat meat without uh, restraint, you know, and it doesn't help that nowadays it makes it easier for you to do that, uh, more accessible to that, you know, you can you can just eat steak every day, but um, well, ready to say hello to heart attack as well. So those most most direct consequences is there as well, health consequences, you know, um, and you know, poverty in and in, in, in a sense is. Uh, due to the karma of you know not taking care of your resource good enough in the past, not cultivating you know, good fortune, uh, you know the, the deeds of giving, especially in the past, or you have a lot of money and wealth, but you are frugal. Uh, you are very not frugal. Frugal is different. You are stingy in giving it. You have more than you need, more than what you need, but you're not. Um, Willing to give the excess uh, resources and share it around, you know, willingly, you know, um, those are the things that you know um, will help you uh, to understand why is it important to. Uh, this one is for yourself, to be honest. This this for this chapter part seven is about you, how you treat your own behavior. Um, I don't want to go too far away from the point. The point is just how your behavior, your attitude towards your resources should be, your attitude towards your clothes, your food, your um, whatever you use, the, the 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 stuff you use, right? And also towards the you know the you know just because you can doesn't mean that you should you know do the um, be eating too often. It's not healthy. First thing is not. Um, economically is also very expensive maybe um, but the best uh, reason would be to avoid yourself from sinking into this karma of killing then the next half we talk about ways and destroy all these precious precious resources you know the food that makes you alive um, and those are commonly in uh, kids and especially adults when they grow into adults you know I can see last time when we were at Perth there was just a couple sitting there each ordering a large 15 inch pizza right 15 inch at least my friend we were so furious because whole family me and my whole family looking at them not that we want to look at them we enjoy our I wasn't vegetarian back then we have a ham pizza supreme you know the supreme pizza. You know those pineapples and ham. They are, they were in Australian West Australia, Perth. So we finish our pasta. We finish our pizza. Everything is so tasty. And then we look at the the, the you know the um, fellow you know the, the customer next to the the corner of the shop, and they were like eating two three slices each. Each of them order fifteen inch at least fifteen inch pizza each. There's two 15 each pizza. They only two, eat two, three slices. And then they disappear. Then, and then they just walk away. We talk about that for months. Every time we're on the car, I say, look at that, man. What the hell? Why why do you waste food like this? And it's a good pizza. It's not like, it's not like, doesn't matter. It's food. Like what I'm trying to say is it's it's just a waste food behavior. It, you're born into this kind of uh, abundance, you know, in, in a place of abundance. That alone proves that you have a lot of good fortune. You just need to, we need education, human education to, to bring out that wisdom, you know. The, the, the need to show them it's not easy, mate. It's not like, 
you don't get this, you know, you won the lottery in a way. If you born here or if you able to move here, so many people want to get into this country or your country as well. Uh, you know, this first world country with so much abundance, with so much resources, even in their in their own place, they might live in a more uh, luxurious life or more uh, life of uh, with more convenience. It's, it's because they have cultivated all these good fortunes in the past. And those are like old fashioned talking, but this is uh, this is true. Right? Otherwise, how could you explain why would pe- some people born starving, you know, dehydrating at the beginning, you know, some that can't even last for long, you know, not long ago, there were great starvation, you know, in, in, in places like the old China, I mean, the, the early, early, you know, modern China back in, you know, 19, 1920s, 1930s, and even beginning of the, uh, the communist liberation. They also have a lot of starvation, isn't it? Man-made starvation, even worse. Those are all, unfortunately, these are all negative karmas. You know? They're all accumulated in one place and bear into fruition. All right. So those those things those things are to be um, aware of. You know, we're very lucky. We're able to escape this kind of fate, and we won't be very lucky next time if we're not aware taking care of our resources. So you make use of everything properly. Teach others by your role example, not not teach as in inf- uh, inspire other people, you know, through your own role model. You know, your own children, of course, you just need to not just talk to them, you also show them this is how you actually do things and they understand and, and they will understand that, right? And uh, if they're being wasteful, you know, we need to remind them that, right? How hard is it? You need to give them a story. You need to tell them the story, how it was founded, you know, how, how things were back then. Let them understand that. People with, most people, are, once you let them know, they will more, most likely understand and able to reflect. You know, let them, just don't, don't tell them directly, you shouldn't do this, shouldn't do that. Just tell them the story. Your grandfather, your grandma, stuff like that. And then how they gone through this thing, you know, back in the days, uh, you know, those are those are those are how I learn as well. You know, just keep passing down this understanding, this knowledge. All right, uh, there are many ways. Okay, just don't waste your next generation's fortune. All right, on your own as well. You know, you spend so much and stuff like that, and you know you could have reserved that good fortune and pass it down to your children, materially or immaterially. You know, materially, like literally, fortune, like right? you know, the house, the money, and stuff like that. Uh, your children were born in a more like uh, a uh, 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 comfortable environment, or immaterially, like you know, your good fortune, the good deeds that you did. You know, people know that you are good people, and in the society, everyone heard that this is a good person, and they will be looking after your children as well. You look after them, they look after you. This is how it should be, right? And uh, if your children is making mistake, they were able to you trust them to teach, to, to educate your children as well, so that you don't have to worry about your children where it ran from, right? It used to be like that. It used to be like when your kids have issues, not just you, the whole village. It takes a village to raise a kid. The whole village will help to raise him. You know, when this kid's bad behavior outside, you know, get called on, and then the parents will be like giving a good lecture or something, and then the whole the other uncles and aunties will also come and do that. So that's the kind of environment, the this, this sense of community, right? So those things cannot come out of nowhere. It has to be taught, right? And this is one such instance I, I might share it and people might share it. You know, but the best, most effective way is to start from childhood. Uh, just bring it up, you know, let them know. You owe, you you born here because you won the lottery. In a way, you have done the good fortune in the past. Hence, you're able to born in a country with luxurious resource. I mean, abundance, right? However, you must understand in the same country, not everyone was born with abundance as well. Some was born with, you know, impoverished. Even though they are in the country, they are supposed to be one of the richest, right? So the karmic is different for everyone. 
right? If you can get to this point, then you, congratulations, you there's a statistic, right? You like you like few percent out of seven billion people. So, um, Master Ching Kong here, he actually went very deep about how we control our karma, our, our fate, you know. Um, I think what we want to say is karma, right? Because I keep saying karma, the whole thing. We need to understand what is karma. Is it really like a script and you are an actor have to follow the script 100%? No room of flexibility, right? We must understand karma, or in the other hand, in other words, we call it fate, destiny. Those things are very binding, right? They are they are a force, right? Just like gravitational force that pulls you to Earth. Karmic force is also a force that pulls you forward in a certain action, speech, thought, right? Those are the outputs of karma as much as um, the place where we go out also come in, right? Where it can lead you forward towards a certain path. And those might seem like unchangeable because it's so strong. You cannot but help. You can't but help yourself. You can't help yourself but following it because you have the habits repeatedly for many lifetimes. However, that comes in the factor of changing your karma. Changing your deeds, changing your fast, changing destiny, and and it's not something simple. You need to make full commitment. Um, and the most obvious one is like the people who cultivate. We, we we see them as religious people. People who cultivate, you know, deliberately their deeds. You know, more aware of their their speech, their action, their thoughts. You know, through reading the scriptures, through understanding, you know. The universe, you know, through thinking, through discussing with other people, through self-reflection, those are cultivate cultivators. They are channeling their energy into focusing their 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 thoughts, their speech, their actions. And any good religion worth their salt, right? Any good teachings, good cultivator worth their salt, they will tell you to stop, to to how to say, overcome. This behavior of greed, hatred, and ignorance. Those three things are to be overcome because those things are default state. They will draw you into this, you know, endless uh, greed over money, over you know, lust, or woman, over man, lust after man or woman, and then over money, over you know, power and stuff like that. And 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 hatred, you know, retributions, vengeance, uh, complaint, etc., etc. Ignorance, you know, interpreting sage teaching in your own way rather than following earnestly. There's also a lot of problem as well. People using whatever the name, the, in the name of whatever sage that person is, you know, in the name of this sage or that sage, I would do this. So it's basically you want to do things, but you you bring in Buddha or you bring in Jesus, you bring in some sage to justify what you're doing. That's very dangerous. Right? Interpreting sages' teaching according to your thoughts, and you are one you are one sentient beings with so much troubles that are not solved yet. So can you imagine following that? It becomes all this unfortunate incident in the history in the name of god we shall kill each other that's stupid that's not how what it's supposed what it's supposed to be this is unfortunate this is ignorance in a way burning people on stakes stuff like that those are ignorance this is not i don't think this is what a sage should, uh, is teaching it's those people who follows and put their own meaning and understanding to it you know put your word into my mouth in a way something like that put our word into Buddha's mouth or Confucius mouth right it can be a joke say Confucius say and then put whatever quote you have there's this even funnier uh, thing in uh, online it says trust uh, the source is trust me bro <laughs> so everyone put whatever stuff they have and then source is trust me bro so this is very very dangerous right um, 
but unfortunate because you know we can't read each other's mind and well we don't want other people to read our mind but we we still need to we need to have wisdom right once you reach wisdom doesn't matter what re- what tradition you are you will arrive at the same point right because they all um a true person with true wisdom they will no longer stuck in their little mode of thinking their their narrow mindset they won't they are always expanding and always encompassing other sentient beings always able to tolerate and go beyond that incorporate being part being one with others right self and others in the end of the day is all about this self and others right greed means you you want more for yourself hatred means whatever you don't like you want to push it away it's always you and others you and others ignorance is you don't understand your relationship with others all right or you don't understand what teachings is about you foolishly act uh, in the direction of your habits hence creating the same suffering or elevating the suffering making even worse escalating into something even worse right from small hatred uh, you know words of you know sharp words sharp remarks into fighting beating and into plotting scheming trying to f- trying to find a way to cripple each other thoroughly into wars into this thing take lifetime as well we cultivate to be buddha take lifetime this hatred and vengeance also take lifetime from small bickering to small fights into you know plotting into fighting between two families into fighting between two countries into maybe a galaxy fighting as well if you go into that kind of scale it happens it will happen it's just logic progression it's unfortunate and that is ignorant right so as a cultivator you want to aware you want to aware be deliberate what you want to do i don't want to create negative karma i want to create positive karma so i need to start doing the act of giving i need to learn to constrain my thoughts focus on the good side of people not the dark side of the people aware but do not focus on it understand it's there don't focus on it you focus on it you keep taking people's rubbish you're sucking their you are what you see right in a sense you're soaking in other people's information as you observe you need to soak in the good part that requires patience you need to see you know anything good about that person all right most people are kind and paid uh, peace as in you need to learn to see that and do not get stuck in that negative side so only then you can also be a ro- good role model if you understand that you will you don't need to be so agitated you don't need to act so you know offensive you're at peace you always bring peace to other people you know those are good role models you know people are fine being themselves around you they don't fear they don't feel you know wanting to defend themselves they feel at ease those are cultivating good deeds you know those those be, those are because your heart is not always confrontational why would a person be confrontational because they always look at someone's bad thing and then they always want to find a place to fight they're used to that mode You know, they used to be stressed and tense have you seen any of these great like master ching kong or master wushing they are tense they're not tense they are busy yes they might be you know talking quite in a, in a, in a loud loud way sometimes because they have they are very happy so sometimes they're easy they're relaxing you're at peace yes you might feel very uh, aware of your action in in their presence because they're very you know good teachers and they can see through you very easily um that makes you more aware but they don't make you tense they will release your tension they will to inform you so this is one way charisma right in a way um but the real cause right it's not sweet talk uh, good talk those are those are superficial the real cause is they have good merits what where did the merit come from the thoughts Right. they always think about um other people always think about being a good role model that comes back into this phrase all this thing the opposite of this 
wasteful behavior, opposite of incessant meat eating or you know, incessant uh, killing for food, and you know wasting food, uh, hurt, uh, wasting human resource. They do the opposite. They do the positive one. They they show everyone, especially monks. You know, you know you've seen Guangqian Lao He and all these good venerables, masters. They don't waste every single food they have. Don't waste every single tissue they have. And then Master Jingkong mentioned about even Lao Fa Si. You know, Master Jingkong himself, he's Lao Fa Si in a way. Is one of the great monk. He always folded his tissue. And he's, he can use it for a whole day. One piece of normal tissue, uh, normal size tissue. So he don't waste. Or Master Hai Xian, which is promoted by Master Qing Kong to everyone when he passed away in 19, 100, 112. I think we heard of it, right? Hai Xian Lao Hezang. Xian Gong Hezang, Fo Men Bang Yang, Bu Si Jing Chan. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. He he don't waste his 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 rope. People keep buying new stuff to him. He keep giving it away to other monks. He keep his old rope, and then he always, you know, 想当和尚要当婆娘 What is, it means? You want to be a good monk, you need to learn those um, 婆娘 which is the um, you know, the uh, handiwork of a lady in the traditional sense, you know, sewing, cleaning. And all that. So he 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 learned all this. He sewed. It's in they recorded. He sewed everything. You know his his shoes, right? He's used so many times. He always fix it. Nothing is wasted. And those are enlightened people. Enlightened fully. Same as the sixth patriarch, Zen master. He lived in such a constricted condition. You know. So how do they do that? You know why do they do that? What brings them to be so? They could have all the wealth and influence because they're such a famous person. But how, could, how how do they do that? Because they understand, they can see the cause and effect clearly. You know, they always start with karma, cause and effect. They understand, you know, every single bite I saved, you know, every single food I saved can be given back to the society, to the sentient beings. It's not cheesy talk. It's serious. They really think like that. Every single food, every single clothes piece of clothes I I did not use, I can give it back. Then and, and they give it back. I use less rice. I use less clothing. Or people give me clothing, I give it away. I don't need all this fancy clothing. I have I'm I have the same thing. I can use it. Why do I need to use so much? Those are a, those are examples of a, of a of a good cultivators. They understand karma. All right. So what they can do is they they do a good example of being a person to do not waste, you know, a frugal person, but also generous towards others, giving giving away. Uh, they always love the society, take or love the sentient beings, always help us, help that all of us to those sage always help us to learn how to be appreciate. You need to appreciate first, appreciate the resources, appreciate where you are, and then cultivate. More fortunes, and then create opportunities for others to cultivate more fortunes. See, right? That's a business model in a way, but not for profit of oneself, but profit for all sentient beings. These are genuine, genuine profits. You know, they are not for 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 bottom-minded mentality. They are literally teaching us how to create pure land in a way, but back in the more moderate and Common uh, uh, practical sense. Once uh, every sentient beings have basic fortunes, they are general like GDP, right? Gross domestic product for a country. If they increase, it means that everyone purchasing powers increase, prosperity increase. So does good fortune. If general sentient beings cultivate good deeds, first don't waste your good fortune. Second, give away whatever you don't need, right? Third, teach people how to do the same thing as you are. Repeat. So, if general good fortune increased, then of course the world is getting more and more better because everyone knows how to、um, treat each other better, right? Treat themselves better, treat each other better. You know, treat yourself better. Not saying that you should waste 
which is the opposite of this. Treat yourself better doesn't mean that you waste food. Uh, doesn't mean that you waste your uh, clothing. Those are those are hurting yourself in long run. Uh, treating yourself better is to learn how to discipline yourself. Learn when to um, how to direct yourself properly towards the positive outcome. You know. All right. So this is how Bodhisattva and Buddha helped each other. Education. All right. Directions. They give you directions, they give you educations. All right. And people with wisdom, with good roots, we call good roots, means people who can receive this message and actually cultivate it and actually do it earnestly. All right. The people with good roots, their destiny will definitely change because their output is always positive. It overcomes the negative stuff they have in the past. People who are not willing to learn, not willing to listen, not even willing to give it a try, of course they won't change. How can you change, right? But only positive thing is it was planted in their mind, this idea. It might come out very, very, very late, might come out next life, but it's there, right? So there's nothing is wasted, see? Very resourceful, Not nothing is wasted. It will, it will be planted. So, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 48 years, no need to say, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, um, so for us, what is our goal? What is our principle of our cultivation? You know, the heart of sincerity, be true and genuine to people, to your work. You know, um, treat people truth, truthfully. You know, don't, don't fake, don't fake it. Just be real, be true with them. All right. Even if you don't say anything, you just be there with them, being with them. You know? And then the heart of purity, you know, do not give rise to greed. Greed, you can branch it into, you know, holding stuff, lusting over other people's uh, look and bodies, or craving for power, craving for attention, those, or the other way, you know, the hatred, the grudge, the nuisance, it's all this teaching, you know, all these emotions. Uh, not be um do not be affected by it do not no do not allow yourself to be moved by these um fluctuations all right all right and then equal equality they and us are one and these are not straightforward i mean they and us are actually one you literally understand that and the last one, the zheng jue, you know, the right awakening, understand the reality as is and the compassion. So we need to cultivate this, cultivate this whole point. You need to plant these seeds in your mind and strengthen it and avoid those negative stuff, as in people who gossip and stuff, complain about stuff. You know, do not allow that sink into your mind. You know, stop it at the doorstep of your ear. Stop it at the doorstep of your mouth if you want to gossip or stuff like that. All right, let's stop here, I think. Um, that's it. We would like to continue next Monday if we can. Uh, so let's just take our merits. Um, May the merits and virtue adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and leave the teaching for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate peace. Amitofo. Alright, let's chant Amitofo. I forgot. Amitofo. 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 A me to for 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 Thank you on the answer. Thank you everyone. Good night. A me to for or good morning to you. <laughs>